Hey everybody, welcome back to Doc's Autos. This is Tim, and if you are new to the channel, thank you, and please consider hitting the subscribe button below, like the video, share it out on social media, and hit that post notification bell to be notified whenever we put out new content on one of our many projects. Today we are working on the Challenger. We have a new radiator to put in, and assuming my GoPro does not die here again, uh, swap this out with a new one. We are putting in a pipe to allow air conditioning to be put in. Uh, the original car with the 318 did have the AC in it. This 440 does not, but we're gonna somehow make it kind of fit. So uh, we do have a lot of water in here now because there is a hole in the radiator and I don't really wanna have coolant wasted, pouring out, whatnot. So the goal is to replace that. But before we get too far, uh, a couple of folks have been asking, where's the 52? What are the updates on that? And the 52, it's still here. It's holding the roof for the Challenger. Uh, pretty much we're at the stage of sandblasting a lot of stuff off and uh, cleaning up some of our spots down here, rusty. And yeah, I don't have lights back here yet, sorry. Uh, but we do have a bunch of material to go ahead and sandblast with. And my only concern is do I get too far into this uh, before the weather turns cold? And I don't really wanna have uh, bare metal out here this winter, especially if we want to run back and forth to the garage uh, with it to get any work done. So kind of hemming and hawing, maybe I'll pull the engine on that. Maybe I'll pull the engine on the Triumph. Maybe I'll go to Florida for six months. I don't know. But right now time is my biggest uh, enemy uh, between um, full-time career, family, kids, property to take care of, uh, side hustles. Uh, it's eight o'clock, 8.15 for me right now on Monday night. And that leaves me what should be three to four hours of working time. In reality, it's gonna be an hour, hour and a half and I'm old and it's time for bed. And if I came in for uh, bed at midnight, 1 a.m., I'd probably be in trouble the next morning. Uh, so we're gonna work with the time we've got and get that done. Uh, but one new thing, if you have noticed, we have more lights in the shop, finally. Uh, part of our delay in working on stuff lately has been uh, having our new uh, lighting installed. I put these up, um, but we had uh, these installed, ran conduit around the place, and had some new outlets uh, added in also, so we weren't just feeding everything off of two 20 amp service outlets. Uh, we also have 50 amps now for our welder, and that's gonna be good. So for car projects, for other projects. Uh, yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and dig out that radiator uh, along of our long wall of parts back there. Hey, there it is right there. So we'll go grab that, unbox it, and get to work with which hopefully will be a rather simple project. All right, so we have a uh, champion radiator here. Darren picked this up off of uh, Summit and uh, had that sent over to me along with Oh, if I can reach it. A new radiator hose, an upper, an upper hose. So let's go ahead and see about getting this thing out. Nice aluminum radiator, it's pretty rad. All righty. Go, fittings. Well, looky, looky. There we go. Nice new shiny aluminum radiator. We got, we got our upper hole or lower hole. And then down here, if we can see it, we've got our in and outlets for our transmission cooling and a nice shiny new petcock or drain plug, whatever you want to call it, which will uh, help us drain out much easier than the rusty crusty one in there that I am sure would rust and break off if I tried to open it up. Now remember, we are going to be taking everything out of here again. The engine's coming out, everything comes out because this inner fender is crumpled. This front support needs to be pulled out a little bit and I do have a new um, inner fender, it just needs uh, to be put in. But to do that, the engine's gotta come out because I've gotta get down here for all the spot welds. And uh, yeah, I think I determined it's best to just take this 
engine out in order to get down here, get everything drilled out, cleaned up, because we are gonna prep the engine bay. Um, everything is in here is staying the sublime green, but the frame rails are gonna be black. The uh, cross members underneath for the engine, uh, everything that's gonna be black. And there's a bunch of overspray in here from the past job. So we're just gonna go ahead and dress everything up in here a little bit. Starting with this guy here, there's not a whole lot holding this radiator in right now. There's, nope, no bolts over here. There is one bolt. Yeah, I think one bolt holding in the radiator over here, maybe two. Get my, nope, I think just one bolt's holding that in and the hoses. Most people are just gonna put this gas can in their front seat, but no, I'm gonna actually take one step of safety better and bungee cord it into the car. That seems great. I mean, after all, the fuel line's just dangling there. So hey, add safety somewhere, take it out from somewhere else. So let's go ahead and get this radiator out. I've got to pinch off the lower cooling hose, unscrew that way down there, and uh, take off the transmission lines. Alrighty, well, pretty quick uh, to get prepped for it. I went through and uh, loosened up this uh, hose here, both ends of it, down there at the bottom. And I've got a big nine inch, uh, nine inch C-clamp on there. Kind of just clamp that off like you do in surgery. Probably a little more uh, precise in surgery than a giant C-clamp on a hose. Uh, I've got the 7 16 inch bolt here to pull off. And the last thing I'm gonna do before I pull um, the radiator out is I'm going to unbolt the, or unthread the transmission lines to try and lose as little transmission fluid as possible since it is brand new fluid. Not like we're gonna care because it's all coming out anyways, but why waste what you don't have to? All right, let's, uh, <clears throat> all right, let's just sort of uh, do this little, time-lapse thing and take this old pile out and put the new one in. You know, if it'll come out, that'd be great. Just wonderful. Well. Nate, there's chunks of silicone and goop in the thermostat housing here. Rust or a leaf or something. You know, I'm gonna take a second and blow that out. Alrighty, this guy can stay on here for now. Let's see about getting that lower hose off. Ugh. That's all oily from our oil pump spewing everywhere earlier. Ugh, and I mean everywhere. I can't even get a grip on it. Well, we'll try and snake him off as we're pulling it out. Let's go ahead and get those transmission lines off. Not too much coming out of the transmission fluid, just more and more coolant. So, let's see if we can drag them out of here. Oh, take this off.
Oh, look at that. Uh, Darren, your car peed on my floor again. It's becoming a common reoccurrence here, bud. So our problem was, find a little better light here. Our problem was, there were some holes up here that have been there for a while. One here as well, down here, and one here. This was the big leaker. So, uh, and down here has been punched in as well too. So you can see pretty much in general, this cooler, this radiator could, uh, could go away. But I think Darren's gonna take this back and uh, either sell it, have it record or something, and uh, try and recoup a little, little money on this thing. Uh, it's still good, if, I mean, the rest of it's solid. There's no rust on the top or bottom or anything like that. Just, uh, just that middle part needs a little help. And the fun thing I noticed on that is the bolts thread through and then secure into the uh, front support here. On this guy, if we we're putting it in backwards, it would work. There's some threaded studs there. But on the front side, they're pass-throughs. So we've got to, uh, oh wait, no, yep. Nope, yep, hey, yep, it'll work. It'll drop right in. That's good news. I'm talking out of turn. So let's go ahead and get this thing prepped. Go ahead and get it prepped to put in and uh, drop it in. Alrighty, we're back here. And the fun thing about putting a car back together you don't have all the parts for yet is you gotta find parts for it. So there's actually four mounts for the radiator. And I only had Oh, I guess. And I only had one. Got a few on out of there. I only had one bolt holding it in up here and some zip ties and the cooling hoses. But I've dug through some bags of parts and found what's going to work for now. I'm sure these go someplace else. But I got two down here to hold it, and I got two more in my hand. So let's see if we can set it in place. and not make a mess out of it, be excellent. You should sit in here, look at that. Yeah, you fit there. I'll get my, this thing out of the way. He's pretty shiny and I think with a little cleaning, pretty shiny and I think with a little cleaning it could really be polished up. There we go. All right everyone seems to be in there so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, tighten these down a little bit. Alrighty, well I realized I've got to go ahead and grab the uh, transmission line fittings off the old radiator to put back on to this new one here and here. So let me get that done. And I also noticed that since this, uh, this front course port is out of whack quite a bit, uh, I'm not going to be able to put all these in. I can get this one and those two in without problem. But this bottom one I'm going to have to wait until I can get everything uh, straightened out again. And hopefully we don't need to replace this front section. It would be sure nice not to because that's a whole lot more work and tearing things apart that Darren's checkbook is not going to like. Remember what I said about peeling back an onion? Yeah. All right, good old radiators back in here. Let's see if I can get uh, at least one bolt over here. Maybe the one that should go in there. Yeah. 
Alrighty, well we got three of the four bolts on. That's fourth one is just because the uh, uh, fittings are uh, out of alignment due to that core support being uh, bent up a little bit. So hopefully we can pull that back into place. Uh, but for now, we're gonna go ahead and get the transmission lines hooked up, that lower coolant hose, and then I'll throw on the top hose and that uh, new coolant. Alrighty, so we've got our transmission lines on, our lower coolant hose is on. I almost forgot to take off the little red uh, cap. So we'll do that right now here for the upper. I'm gonna go find our uh, hose. Where my hose at? Figure out how you go on here. What else is in the way? Pipe clamp. 20 minutes later. The first place you find that's the last place you look. Well, that took way too long to find. Get our top hose on here. Cool. That's only in the way of heater hoses, spark plugs. A lot of that stuff's getting changed anyways. There, I didn't lose my trusty screwdriver yet. Go ahead and get these tightened up. I think, if not mistaken, the air conditioning ends up, compressors ends up fitting over here. But I don't remember, maybe it's down below. I don't know. I have never worked on one of these before. Can you tell? All right, you're on there. Now, let's go find that coolant. All right, now, before the GoPro rudely interrupted us and shut off, I was saying, we're not the local Menard store, picked up a gallon of peak concentrate, and I'm just gonna dump this whole gallon in here because this is gonna be mostly water already. There's a gallon or was a gallon of 50-50 in here, and I wanna make sure that this does not freeze over the winter and make other bad things happen because that would be no good. So, let me go ahead, dump her in. And I know we're not gonna have enough, but we will uh, get the engine fired up soon here, get things circulated around, get the air out of here, make sure we top this off. That I will probably do with a 50-50. Because uh, I know more than a gallon is going to fit in here. So let's just uh, give it a whirl. Well, it didn't make much of a dent. Let's. Uh, Let's put another gallon, make it 50-50. All right. Do you like this antifreeze's concentrate is bright green, kind of matches the car, so. You know, that polished aluminum really kind of gets in a guy's eyes. Hey, here we go. Just about two gallons will fill up this radiator and uh, short of a little bit of water dripped, did not drip any of the uh, antifreeze anywhere. So that's a bonus. There's already enough of it on my floor. So I guess that's one good thing you can say about dirt floors is that I'm not ruining nice new concrete floors. So we're gonna go ahead and put the cap back on for now. And yeah, it's kind of seeping in there a little bit. And anyways, for right now, that's gonna do it for the radiator swap. Uh, pretty simple task, assuming you can find all the bits and parts that you left somewhere and uh, get them back on. We'll uh, go ahead and fire this up. Not tonight, because it's now almost 10 o'clock my time. So almost two hours to get this thing done with all my fiddling around and monkey futzing around and whatever. So uh, trying to start this thing at 10 o'clock is just asking to wake up the neighborhood. And by that, I mean the kids. Neighbors could really care less. So for this video, that's gonna wrap it up. 
Uh, we are going to come back. We've got a lot left to do on this one. Uh, see what we can do with the weather. You know, maybe talk to Darren. He'll come down. We can uh, yank the engine and transmission out of this thing for the winter and uh, work on that up in the garage. And all the car stuff can just kind of sit down here and hibernate this winter. I mean, there's lots to do on the car or on the engine. Uh, it's going to get cleaned. It's going to get repainted. Uh, valve cover gaskets, uh, valve covers. A couple of the plugs need to get redone or replaced. Uh, find proper wiring for the uh, spark plugs. The headers, still not sure what we're doing with those. If we're going to try and keep these and just pretty them up or uh, find new ones altogether. Uh, something on the power steering, not sure if it's the pump or in the rack, there's a seal loose that uh, fluid is pouring out. But now that I think about it, maybe it was the oil that was leaking out when we first got it started and uh, got mistaken for oil. They're both kind of black and dirty, so who knows? But yeah, lots of stuff we could do on this engine um, over the winter to get it prettied up. So when springtime rolls around, we can uh, get, the, uh, get the engine bay blasted out and sprayed and uh, keep moving forward. I mean, the roof we've got to do, the floor, uh, the floor pan we've got to do, the rear package tray. We're still waiting on the fender uh, patch panel for the rear, uh, rear fender. Uh, still waiting to patch up the uh, skin on the passenger side door. So I mean, there's tons of work we can do. I just don't want to get ahead of myself and have to take stuff back apart because I forgot to do something uh, I should have done way before I got to that point in time. Anyways, hope you've liked this. Uh, we are going to come back. Don't forget the 52. Yep, that's coming back. Believe me on that. Just time. So I guess until we come back with the next video, which will be next Saturday morning for you, if you're watching these all in uh, chronological order, uh, keep doing what makes you happy and we'll see you very soon in the next video. Bye-bye.